Hello everyone, happy Saturday and welcome back to another Saturday Anything Goes. We actually could call this Stamparatus Saturday too because we're going to give our Stamparatus a good workout. Um, if you watched any of my previous lives since I got my um, order from the new catalog, you all know Very Versailles was what I picked to be my favorite stamp set. It's both classic and vintage as well. And when I think of papers that are classic and, and vintage, um, I think about the elegant stationery that was so popular back in the 50s and 60s and even into the 70s. And how monogramming was the thing to do. So if you were anybody at all in society, evidently you had monogram note cards. And the very Versailles set, when I saw it, I thought, how perfect would that be? Because we can combine um, several of the stamps on here to create some lovely note cards. I didn't just stop there, though. I decided to make the note cards in all of our in colors. I um, was just playing around and thought, well, let's give it a try. And I really liked how they came out and then as if that wasn't enough this afternoon I even made a box that will hold oh probably at least 10 of our note cards and envelopes and these are the three and a half by five inch uh, whisper white note cards so this is just a simple box it has a flip top on it uh, pretty roomy inside and if we don't go too long on making the cards We'll go ahead and make another box for the set we're going to do tonight. So I did my first set out of Whisper White. I thought the second set we would do out of Very Vanilla. I don't use Very Vanilla enough. I really like it, um, especially when you're talking about things that are vintage and classic. Uh, if you've ever gone through Grandmother's, keepsakes you probably found a lot of cards that were a very heavyweight cardstock and cream just seemed to be a color that uh, was very popular back then so that's what we're going to do now I mentioned that our Stamparatus is going to come in handy and let me show you why obviously we don't want to be here all night stamping each of the note cards in a different color having to switch out um, and clean everything off and I'm ready to just do some uh, volume stamping if it was so I took the stamps that I wanted to use and your Stamparatus thank goodness comes with two plates and your plates can be reversed as well that gives us four surfaces that we can use to uh, line up our stamps so the first ones that I lined up are this crest I'll call it and also the beautiful script writing and to do that all I did was I went ahead and folded up my note cards just so that I could make sure everything was up against this corner nice and tight all right and then what I did was I simply laid down these first two stamps and then took the Stamparatus plate and laid it down and picked them up and what I'll be able to do is stamp this. And if I want, I could stamp all five cards at the same time and then switch out my plate because on the second one, I have this beautiful leafy pattern that we're going to use. And you can't very well have a crest without something on it. Um, so I grabbed the A from the Make a Difference uh, stamp set it has two sets um, of alphabet letters one of them is script and the other one is block letters so I have really enjoyed using that and luckily the script fit perfectly within um, that crest so that's what we're going to be doing and it should go fairly quickly hello Sandy hi Karen all right so we're going to start with the first plate and that's because if I bring my other cards in 
I want my leafy pattern to overlay everything. Um, we're going to use Smoky Slate ink, and it allows the in colors to shine through it um, because of the way that the stamp set is made. And um, so we'll do these two first, and then we'll bring in our leafy pattern, and lastly, we'll do um, our monogram letter. All right, let's get cracking here. As I mentioned, I'm going to use every one of our in colors, so I've got them all right here. Um, I keep changing my mind on which ones are my favorite, but that's okay. I can have more than one favorite, right? All right, I'm going to put the stamp set, uh, the stamp case down there just so I have something to rest my uh, Stamparatus lid on. If you don't put something underneath it and you go to ink it up, it bounces and you don't get even inking. So we'll start with our Rococo Rose since I happen to have that one on top. And we'll just go ahead and ink it up. I really didn't have to ink up the very bottom of the um, writing because it's the card is shorter than that, but you know. It doesn't hurt anything to do that. Now let me just move this to the upper corner. That way it won't interfere with my script here. And then we'll just lay it down. Give it a good press. Just like that. And there we have both our crest and our uh, script writing. Now, if you have areas that did not ink up well, the beauty of the apparatus, you can just go ahead and re-ink and reapply it and it's going to line up perfectly but this one looks good let's move on to the next one so this truly is going to be like assembly line so i've got my next card here we'll wipe this off and move on to our next color let me close this up before i create problems there this is our purple posy Again, I'm just going to ink it up and lay it down. So I hope you guys are having a great weekend. We've had quite a few thunderstorms this weekend. Now here you'll see how the middle did not ink up well. Not a problem. I'm just going to bring back in my ink and re-ink it. And give that middle a little bit of love. Perfect. All right. On to the next one. So see what I mean? This goes really, really quickly. And I love it because once we're done with laying down the uh, base work of our card here with the first couple of stamps, then we can move on and finish it up and it'll get done lickety split. Next, I'm going to use our Seaside Spray, and I have to tell you, I really do love this. It is just the most beautiful grayish blue. Very soft. Okay. Here we go. And I need to ink that part up again a little bit. Must not be hitting it very well with my ink pad. And there we go. So that's three done, comes our fourth, and it's either going to be, what's it going to be? Is it going to be Pretty Peacock or Terracotta Tile? Those are the only two we have left. And it's going to be Terracotta Tile. That Terracotta Tile just goes so beautifully with the uh, Mosaic DSP and stamp set. Oh. I'm not really much of a yellow person, but oh my goodness. I am when it has terracotta tile in it. Oops, I hope I don't lose you guys. The lights just flickered, which usually means we have a storm moving in. So keep your fingers crossed. All right, that one's done. We got one more, one more. I know they said we were in. I forget what they, they called it. There's a term for it, um, for the type of weather that started out in the Midwest is kind of headed our way that has not only thunderstorms and heavy rain, 
but wicked straight line winds of up to 80 miles an hour. I just can't even picture that. Can you imagine standing up and just getting hit in the face with 75 mile an hour wind? Whew. I mean, that's like almost hurricane, right? Okie dokie. Pretty peacock. Yeah, that's a pretty one too. Now I have a feeling my magnet might be in the way on this one. Nope, it wasn't. But let's see here. All right. So those are the five cards with the crest and the script writing on it. So now what we'll do is I'm just going to clean this off real quick and then we're going to switch out our plates and do it all over again. But I promise it will go real fast. All right. So we're done with this one. Bring in the other one. So now I think what I want to do, let's see, do I want to do the leaves first? I think I want to do the uh, monogram first. So we will put this up in here and bring in our first one. Now here I know I can put my magnet down here and then I better move all this out of the way because I need to put my stamp case over here and make sure that I keep you guys in frame here. Now, I want the monogram. I mean, you could do it as black. You could even heat emboss it. I decided to kind of keep that monochromatic theme going. Um, so I'm just going to use the same in colors. Uh, we'll let our leaves, which are that silvery color, add uh, that really nice touch of finishing it off. But the monogram, I want to, well, no, you know what? I take it back. I don't. I don't. Nope. Nope. We're going to do the monogram in gray. I just think that that will really help everything stand out. And we won't have to go through and use all of our in colors again. I think if I were to do this again, though, I really like the idea of heat embossing. Wouldn't that be just beautiful? So we've got our gray. Just ink that up. And I'm using Smoky Slate. You certainly could use basic gray or even um, gray granite. Gray granite would probably look really good against this cream. And my ink pad is a little dry. So let me just quickly ink that up again. All right, so that's one. And we're just going to go through and do all of the uh, letters first, and then we'll come back and stamp our leaves to finish it off. Oh, you know what? This is photopolymer. I really should have my photopolymer map in place. So let me just quickly grab that. As you know, with photopolymer, we're supposed to use it, right? So let me just take this off and slip this right underneath. Just remind me to take it out again when we do the next part. So now let's see if we can get a slightly better image. Oops, <laughs> I didn't have it pushed all the way up. Whoopsies. That will have to be a do-over. Not going to make you sit through it, though. Yep, you got to be careful when you're moving stuff that you have it back up in that corner or that's going to happen. All right, let's do this again. Okay, got my A in place. You also want to make sure that your hinge is well seated because it will slip up. And that absolutely can make a difference. Oops, get that little bit of gray out of there. Don't want to smudge up my card. 
All right, down we go. I'm just going to hit it one more time. Now would be a good time to have an ink spot, wouldn't it? I think I need to invest in one. Okay. I do really like the gray, though. And it's nice I don't even have to clean up the stamp, right? Because I'm using the same color ink. One more. And then we'll finish it off with those leaves. Oh, I don't hear the TV going, so that means we've got satellite. And anytime there's a thunderstorm, yep, it goes out. So my husband's probably back there gnashing his teeth that he can't watch his program. Oops. Okay, this is the last one. Get my magnet out of the way there. Just make sure. There we go. All right. So now I am just going to flip my plate over just like that. And we're ready to move on to our leaves. Hi, Roz. Babysit the grandkids again, huh? You have all the fun. Hopefully, I'll get to go see mine a little later this summer. All right, I absolutely, oops, adore these leaves. But guess what? Well, I'm committed. I'm going to have to try and do it. I forgot to take my mat out. You guys forgot to tell me to take my mat out. See what happens? No worries. That one inked up well. But we'll take the mat out before we do the next ones. I don't need another oopsie. Okie dokie, we'll bring in our next one. So what y'all's favorite in color? Somebody tell me. Yes, it would be amazing heat embossed, Roz. And I think I'm going to have to try that on my next set. Because I have about two more sets of these that I need to make. But as you can see, oh my gosh, it just goes together so quickly. And I haven't been showing my Stamparatus enough love, so this was the perfect project for it. Last one. in there you thank you and you know what I'm gonna bring in the one I messed up and do it too because I can always um, do an a in a little circle and put it in there so try never to throw away cards that have a little boo-boo on them because you can usually find a way to make them better. All right. That is it as far as making our cards. So that's simple. And let me just put my Stamparatus away here. Um, that easily, and let's see what time do we have. Oh, my gosh. In like 15 minutes, we made five note cards all in a row. So very, very easy to do. Okay. I thought, well, I knew this wasn't going to take as much time at all. So how about I show you how to do the box that I did for my first set. It is super simple. Only takes up one sheet of cardstock. And it's really nice when you can have a presentation box to put things in. And like I said, it will easily hold... 10 note cards and envelopes. So let me put these aside and we'll have to bring in our Simply Scored board for this. So I'm going to zoom you guys out a bit so that you can see it. Well, wrong way. 
wrong way. Let me bring in my scoreboard. Make sure you can see. There we go. All right. So this piece of paper measures 8 by 11. So you just cut half an inch off and you're ready to go. And I chose um, the Rococo Rose because I'm going to pair this instead of using the um, Perennial Essence DSP. We're going to use the uh, Press Petals. And I just think it's going to look beautiful. All right, so let me bring up my cheat sheet here so I can tell you measurements. All right, so we've got our 8 by 11. I want to put it on this side. And with the long edge at the top, we're going to score it at one inch, at two inches, at six inches, and at seven inches. Then you're going to give it the old rotate, and you're going to score this at one, and at seven. And that's all the scoring. Easy breezy. So we'll put our simply scored away. And we will fold and burnish so we can have those nice crisp lines. And this is really important for you to burnish it well, or that flip top um, part will not really close. It'll kind of pop up if you don't have some crisp lines. All right, so that's those. I've got two more. And this is going to go together really fast, too. All right, I'll bring in my snips. And we'll just make a couple cuts. Hi, Patricia. Okay. So you've got your little squares here and here. Those are going to become flaps. So you'll want to cut up the score lines there and take a little wedge to remove your score line. That really helps cut down on the bulk. Do it for both of them on this side, and then we'll complete it by doing the ones on the other side. All right. Flip it over here. Awful quiet out there. Up, oh, I hear the TV. Must be back up. I kept trying to convince him that we didn't want satellite TV. Because I had it when I lived in Nebraska, and Lordy, it was going out all the time we had weather. But <clears throat> he couldn't pass up a good deal. So, all right, so this is how our box is going to come together. The part that has the two pieces up here, that's our top. This is going to come up. Now, our flaps, you know how we're used to gluing the outside and then gluing this? We're not going to do that. We're, I showed you all, was it my last video or the video before, that when you have a box that closes like this, you can actually have your flaps be like that. And that way, when you look inside, of course you can't see, but it's all smooth. Your flaps are not in there. All right, so I do want to make sure that, so this is going to be the front because that's where my lid's going to be. So I want these two flaps to be on the outside. It'll all make sense, trust me. All right, so that's how it's going to go together. I'm going to pull these flaps in just to show you. So right there, and that's going to cover that flap. And if you find that it sticks out a little bit, you can always trim a little bit more off. But that's why I went ahead and wedged 
was to give us that little extra room. Now you say, but Linda, what about, you've got two sets of flaps up there. Don't we need to cut one off? No, 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 no. We need both of those because in order to fold this and have it be a lid, I'm going to pull that flap down there and that down there, and then I'm going to wrap this around, and that's what completes our box. All right, so everybody with me so far? <laughs> I know, first time I saw it, I was a little confused too, but trust me, it really is easy. Let me go ahead and do the bottom part first, so I just have to remember that these flaps are going to be the ones that come around. So I'm going to put my tape on the inside here. If I can get this to cooperate. My friend Shirley sent me all of her fast fuse refills, but I have to use up this one before I break into them. At least that's what I told myself. I was getting along pretty good with fast fuse and then they discontinued it. All right, so there we've got that. And what is going to happen is this is going to fold up just like this, and that is going to stick down. All right? So again, this folds in, bring it up, and your flap comes down over that. Okay? So you've got your flaps on the outside, but when we do this, ta-da, it magically hides them. Before I do that, though, this guy doesn't want to stick down. Get on there, you. All right, I do need to put um, some, you can use tear and tape, you can use uh, liquid glue, you can use your fast fuse, uh, whatever you want. But you do want to make sure that you have, I'm doing two lines, one close to the outside and one right next to the crease. And that way, I won't have that dreaded thing we call gaposis. You know, where you've got a little bit that sticks out that you wished you had glued down. Yeah. Oops, come on. All right. Now, before I even stick it down, I'm going to make sure that I've got the edge of this right up against that score line and it should fold over nice and neat. So again, the edge right up against that score line and fold it up. And there, because we put two strips of tape, we don't have anything gapping loose over there hate that dreaded gaposis. Okay, so this, remember, we are going to have that flap come in and that flap come in. So in this case, you will have flaps on the inside, but you don't have any cards or anything needing to get in there. So it should wrap around just fine. So let us use a little bit. I really should have my silicone mat down. See what I mean? <laughs> I grab some of the wood paper. Come off there, you. Okay, dark. So this is going to. Oh, and I just did that wrong, you guys. Did you see that? I was supposed to put that one on the outside. That's okay. You know what you do when you have a problem like that? You take the sticky off. We're going to de-stickify it. And that's what our neat little cornstarch pad is for. So if you ever do that, and this isn't something anybody's going to see, so if I had to make a boo-boo, that was the right place to do it. I want it on the outside. Well, let's try that one more time. I think I'm going to use my tear and tape because I can't get the, the fuse container in that small a space. But I didn't want to put fast fuse on it before I had the bottom built because I didn't want to run the risk of sticking the wrong thing together. 
So no worries. All right. Come on. There we go. Just give that a good burnish. And we'll bring in our, my pokey tool. And here we go. Then we get to get to the fun part, which is decorating. All right, now, so what I want is we've got the tape on the outside there. I'm gonna bend this over and just line them up. And you know, if it's easier for you to do that by closing the box to do it, you certainly can do that. Because see there, I can press that down and that will go right over it. And that's what ensures that you have a good close to your lid. So open and close. Come on, there we go. It works better if there are cards in it because right now it's kind of not full enough or doesn't have anything to press against. All right, so there we go. Now let's move in or move on and talk about decorating. So here's my little goodie bag. I just am in love with this DSP. I like that it's very thin and lightweight because that way, especially for cards, it's not adding a ton of bulk. And for um, added decoration, if you haven't seen this petal washi tape, oh my gosh, it is amazing. You simply pull off a petal, and what I did was I used my one inch punch and just punched um, some scrap paper, some scrap cardstock, and then I took this and I just laid it down on it. And it took five petals to make each one of these. Pretty, pretty. So very easy to make um, flowers. And then in the centers, I use some of our new perennial essence floral centers. Okay, measurements. Now, you could make it easy and do two pieces that are uh, three and three quarters by five and three quarters for the front and back, okay? and it fits perfectly. But because that lid is there, I really didn't want to impede with it. If you get a lot of cards in there, I didn't want there to be an extra layer. So I actually cut a layer that is three inches this way by five and three quarter. Because when you close the lid, and we're gonna put a strip of paper here, uh, you won't see that it's missing the top part. If you're using a directional paper, remember <laughs> to be aware that you're putting it on the right way. Um, I do want to give this, if I try and glue this down, see how there's just nothing there? Well, I found that I can slip in a couple of blocks to give me something to press against. So hang on, I think I need one more. Oh, that's too much. I think I did it with just the two. So it doesn't matter, whatever you wanna put in. If you have all of your cards finished uh, and your envelopes, you could put them all in there. But try to have at least something in that when you're uh, pressing down on this to adhere it, because I'm gonna use my liquid glue, um, that it will adhere easily. So. Oh, there's nothing better than a new bottle of glue. It just loves to come play with you. All right. So just make sure there should be like a small, slight border. So we want some of that Rococo Rose to show through. And then I'm going to flip it over. I don't want to mess up my box, though, so I'll just do it this way. I think I'll be all right with one. And now I am going to put that piece that is uh, three and three quarters by five and three quarters on here. I just think it looks nice to have a finished back, even though maybe people are going to have that back against um, their desk or against a wall. 
you and I know that it's good to have it look super all the way around. Okay, I'm going to slide over just a little bit. There we go. All right, so that's our back. Slip this bad boy out because it should be pretty easy from here on. I am going to put strips on the side. You certainly don't have to, but I just love the way that it looks. So you'll need two strips that measure 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths. Nope, sorry, those are those two. Let's try 7 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths. That's it, Linda. All right, so again, it's just going to leave me a nice little border. You also could have used the uh, alternate side if you wanted to give it a little more of a contrasting look because this paper has a very pretty opposite side. Stay. Why is it my box minds me better than my dog? Tell my dog to stay and she just looks at you like, yeah, and that's really going to work. Unless you give her a bone, then she'll stay for 15 minutes while she's eating it. Okay, so we've got that. We don't want to leave out. Whoops, not that one, Linda. Because remember, we want our box to close. We don't want to leave out, though, this lip as well as the top. And these are the two pieces that I cut at 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths. So I think I want this one for there. All right. Again, you just want to have a small border. If you want more of your um, cardstock to show through instead of 7 8 you could use um, 3 quarter measurements because 7 8 is just one up from the 3 quarters. All right. So we've got this. Oops. I could go the right way. There we go. Just like that. All right, and I'll bet you think we're done. Now, see these little ends here? I couldn't leave them unadorned. So my last two pieces are 7 8 by 7 8 You wouldn't think something that small would make such a difference, but it really finishes off the box. That way it looks pretty from any side. Okay, one more. All right. So that is all there is to the DSP. Now, on my other one, I use the Daisy Punch and stamp, and then I um, put a sentiment on it. This one, I don't want to hide any of that paper. I think all I'm going to do is put the two flowers on. I may decide later to put a little something there, but I just really like the way it looks like that. Now, um, like I said, I did uh, do a one inch circle punch. On this one, I actually used, I think, a two inch and had to cut around the petals. So this is much better. You have much more flexibility of your petals if you only use the one inch. So that's going to be my top flower. That one's going to be my bottom flower. Let's use some glue dots. I think glue dots will work well for this. So I'm just going to put maybe three or four. I want to make sure that I get a good hold. And let's do one more right there. All right. So this one is going to be right there. And just make sure that it's pressed down. And then this one, because I want it to sit up a little, yep, you guessed it, we're going to use a dimensional. And one should be plenty for that. So let's see, for this one, 
Where do I want to put this? I think I want to put it right there. I like that. All right, let's bring back in our cards and envelopes. So we only have five of each, but if you look in there, you can see there is a lot more room. So I, I'm pretty sure you could fit probably 10 in there. So what do you guys think of that? Hi, Amy. Yeah, Karen, to me, simple stamping can be a challenge sometimes, but when you've got a stamp set, set like Very Versailles, it just comes naturally for being able to let the stamps do all the work. But, like I said, the Stamparatus is really what made this go very, very quickly. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I got some of that cornstarch powder and tickle in my throat. All right. Anybody have any questions about what we did with this? And I'll bring both of those in just so you can see them. All right. Well, I will let you all go and hope that you have a blessed day tomorrow. We will see you next Saturday night at 8 o'clock. If there's any project you would like for me to demonstrate or any particular stamp set or DSP, drop me a comment. I really love it when you ask me to make something um, because I know then that it's something you really are going to want to do. Um, otherwise, if not, I will just pull the magic stamp set out of the hat and we'll go with that. Okay, everybody, I will see you next week. Bye now.